So um, with this, uh, we come to the last talk of this uh, contributed session, which is actually the last contributed talk of the whole conference, if I'm correct. So the only uh, talk after this is the plenary talk. Um, the following talk will be given uh, by uh, Fahime Mohtari, and uh, she's going to talk about um, inversion of Klebsch Gordon of the Klebsch Gordon formula um, applied to a nilpotent uh, singularity. So we're looking forward to your talk. Um, can you hear me? Yes, hear you and see the presentation. Okay, that's perfect. Uh, thanks, Philippe, for uh, introduction. Um, and a good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about inversion of Klebsch Gordon uh, formula applied to nilpotent singularity. Uh, but I would like to uh, start um, um, uh, from the subject of local dynamic cost system. Uh, so, uh, in local dynamic cost system, we uh, study the following uh, differential equation x dot equals f of x, uh, in which f of x is a nonlinear smooth function. Um, so, um, uh, so for given this uh, dynamical system or differential equation, we look at the fixed point of the system and uh, we expand the nonlinear part of uh, equation to uh, around the fixed point um, by like a Taylor expansion to get this um, dynamical system. So uh, AX is linear part and A1, A2 and uh, like a dots are higher order terms. Uh, and A is n times n matrix, and we assume that uh, this is um, like a constant matrix without parameter. Uh, so the aim of local dynamical system is a study uh, of behavior of solution of this kind of system around the, um, the fixed points. So we um, already shift the fixed point to the origin, so uh, we want to describe the behavior near the origin. Uh, so we uh, classify the fixed points in the two uh, types, the hyperbolic one and the non-hyperbolic one. For the hyperbolic fixed point, the eigenvalues, um, um, if you compute the eigenvalues, you don't have zero or uh, eigenvalues with the zero real parts. And uh, the other right, it, uh, the fixed point will be non-hyperbolic. Uh, so if we have a um, hyperbolic fixed points, uh, the problem will be solved because you can use hartmann grobman theorem to uh, study the qualitative behavior of the system uh, by uh, like a linear part of uh, equation, like x dot equals ax. So you can get rid of all higher order terms. Uh, but uh, from uh, our point of view, this kind of problem are a bit boring because there is no any challenge there. So the challenge is uh, when we have the non-hyperbolic fixed point. Uh, so uh, if we have a non-hyperbolic fixed point, uh, first we uh, study the normal form of uh, this system. So uh, normal form is like a very effective tools for local study of nonlinear dynamical system around those uh, non-hyperbolic points. Um, so uh, it is like uh, we, um, uh, we have uh, systems with um, non-hyperbolic fixed point and we put the system to the um, like a, a simplest form which can obtain by applying the transformation which are invertible. And uh, we want this transformation preserve the uh, dynamical feature of the original um, uh, like a system or object. So uh, for example, if you consider the matrix from the uh, linear algebra, you can put the matrix to the Jordan form. So um, like uh, the Jordan form can be normal form for the matrix. And you uh, find the Jordan form by applying the similarity transformation. Uh, so we want to apply the normal form uh, to the nonlinear dynamical system with uh, around the non-hyperbolic fixed point. Um, so how does this uh, normal form work? So let's take a look at this uh, simple diagram. Um, so we have the nonlinear system. We expand the nonlinear system around the non-hyperbolic fixed point. We get x dot equals ax plus higher order term. 
so we don't want to disturb like a linear part of system. So we apply the near identity transformation, x equals y plus f1y. And um, uh, so in the next step, we try to simplify the a1x using f1y. So we get a linear equation um, that, that, that uh, should be solved. Uh, so in this S step, we uh, normally get very large matrix. And if the dimension increase and I uh, increase, um, solving this equation can be very hard and very complicated. So after we solve this equation, we get our first Levin norma form, uh, which is equals AY plus BY. So BY already is in the uh, norma form. Then we um, increase i uh, from one to two, and we simplify um, so up to a specific order. Uh, so what am I doing in my research is avoiding this large matrix and uh, this complex uh, this complex complexity that can be arise when dimension increase. Um, so I um, we use uh, some like algebraic method um, as a true representation that I will talk about this later on. Uh, to put, to uh, study this kind of equation um, uh, like in the very uh, smart way. Um, so um, I give you one example: the non-hyper, non-harmonic oscillator. The linear, the zero zero is eigenvalue um, is a fixed point, and plus minus i is the uh, eigen are the eigenvalues. So we have non-hyperbolic fixed point. And I put the all second order and third order uh, terms in the nonlinear part. Uh, if uh, one computes the normal form, you will get the following equation. So the linear part is the same because we use the near identity transformation. And as you can see, the all terms in this uh, second order uh, eliminated are eliminated. And in the third order, we have a few terms which are uh, symmetric. So uh, using the norma form, we get rid of all terms which, uh, which doesn't have a, which doesn't play a role in the dynamical behavior of system. And we get some things very uh, simpler and uh, nicer and get symmetric, uh, symmetric form. Um, so how we classify the norma form and how we uh, start uh, computing the norma form. We start from the linear part of the system. So the linear part can be nilpotent or it can be semi-simple or non-semi-simple. So if we have a nilpotent linear part, we use SL2 representation theory to embed the nilpotent part uh, to SL2 and the terms which are in the uh, kernel of add of M, M is the um, like other element in the SL2, um, uh, will be uh, the terms in the norma form. So, um, uh, and for the semi-simple case, if we consider S to be li a linear part and be semi-simple, those terms which are in the kernel of add of S are in the norma form. So uh, you can see that the semi-simple uh, system has an obvious symmetry. The norma form is uh, obvious symmetry because you have already the linear part. But for nilpotent one, uh, the normal form are those terms which are in the kernel of M. So M is not in your system. So you have kind of hidden symmetry there. So for not semi-simple case, you combine the both method from nilpotent and semi-simple one. Um, so what is the SL2 representation theory? So the concrete Lie algebra of SL2 is it generated by three matrix M and H uh, uh, with the following uh, Lie product. So M is the uh, nilpotent matrix, N is nilpotent, and H is uh, semi-simple. And um, so the Lie product is defined by A, B minus B, A. So uh, the, uh, from the abstract Lie algebra, the SL2 is represented by triple M and H. Uh, they satisfy in this, uh, uh, Lie product um, um, conditions. Um, so um, for the normal form theory, the challenging part is classifying the unique normal form. Uh, the unique normal form is the form uh, 
uh, when you cannot simplify your system, uh, your system any, anymore. So you find the simplest form of the uh, vector free uh, system. Uh, so in this uh, slide, I'm going to review some um, progress about um, uh, this, um, um, like a 3D and the other uh, classification of a normal form, unique normal form. So the 1D system uh, was a study by Kokobo in 1987. For the 2D system, the semi-simple case and nilpotent cases uh, were a study by Bider, Churchill, and uh, Sanders. And from 2009, I uh, start to classify the unique normal form and the application of the uh, normal form for three, uh, three dimension case. And it is uh, still uh, in progress, but um, yeah, yeah, I uh, kind of switch to find the normal form for some network dynamical system uh, while I'm also studying the um, unique normal form for three pair zero singularities. Um, so in this slide, I, um, uh, I want to review some results about the Hopf zero singularity. Um, so the classical normal form or first order normal form of Hopf zero is look like this. And uh, we could find some non-standard SL2 representation for this kind of system. So as you can see this, uh, the linear part has a zero and plus minus I eigenvalue. So you don't have a nilpotent one, but once you simplify in one level, you can find some SL2 um, uh, for your system. So this is the non-standard one, and using this SL2, we could decompose the non-linear part and linear part to some uh, SL2, uh, SL2 component. So these components are name F, uh, theta, and E. And uh, this is very interesting that um, each component has a special um, dynamical feature, like uh, F is um, a family of uh, conservative vector feed uh, with, uh, with uh, first integral. Uh, so I pick one uh, simple um, Lial Joba an example. So if you consider these half zero vector fields, which are generated by this Eulerian operator, uh, if we compute the unique normal form, just three terms will be uh, stay in the normal form. So we uh, almost eliminate the all terms in the system. So it shows that how the normal form theory can be effective. So if you uh, assume that the, like a, the per, a person wanted to study this kind of system, um, so it has a lot of complexity uh, because F here is the nonlinear function. And then you ca it, uh, uh, the, the normal form can be very, uh, in the very simple uh, form with a few terms, so it's very easy to uh, study. So we already uh, studied this kind of uh, uh, normal form. Um, but um, about the triple zero singularity, uh, which is uh, very challenging, um, if we consider um, if the linear part of um, system be uh, the nilpotent matrix like this, so we can um, embed this matrix to the SL2 tree pair. And then using the uh, SL2 representation theory, we could uh, uh, kind of uh, decompose these uh, vector fields uh, corresponding to the triple zero uh, linear part to the tree family, which uh, we name uh, ABC family. Uh, for finding the uh, structure constant, uh, for finding the normal form, we need to find the structure constant, the, like a Lie product between uh, these vector fields. So they are very complicated. And so to, in order to simplify it, we use some um, a formula, which is called klebsch gordon coefficients from quantum group theory to simplify this uh, structure constant and finding the normal form. Um, so as you can see, the components of SL2 representation are uh, very complicated. So this, um, uh, like n power to the L, that I is just action of a linear part, the nilpotent part, over to uh, some function. So uh, in the vector field, we have the n orbit uh, of function. So when we do the Lie product, 
we need to figure out what uh, would be the leap products of um, or what would be the products of these uh, these uh, function together because everything is uh, like a, an orbit of l it's not product of two n orbit um, so uh, here i um, uh, define the uh, transvectant so um, the transvectant um, so it's um, if we have a two n orbit from the sl2 representation the transvectant between 2n orbit is defined by this uh, summation and uh, vim are the n orbit and vm are elements which are in the kernel of m uh, so um, uh, what we have here like uh, the we want to know the product of 2n uh, to be represented by 1n so we need to kind of uh, do the inversion formula for this uh, klebsch gordon um, so we could find the inversion formula for the klebsch gordon and by applying this formula, so which is a bit complicated, we could find the uh, structure of n orbit according to the 1n orbit. So when we do the Li product uh, and we have two products of n, we can, uh, using this formula, we can convert to the 1n. And um, um, then we can uh, convert the like a, an orbit to the ABC Li algebra and uh, it is uh, ABC component and it is the way to classify the Li algebra as well because if we couldn't uh, if we cannot compute the structure constant we wouldn't would not be able to uh, find the Li algebras. Um, so um, this is the, uh, the B family is the Li algebra so if we leap product two elements from this family, we will uh, like it will be generate one element in the B family again. So we have a Lie algebra here, and this family are completely integrable and volume preserving. So that's very interesting. That so using the SL two representation theory, you can find a very meaningful component of your vec your uh, given vector fields. Um, so uh, we have a linear part and the v x y z v x y z are nonlinear terms which are belong to the these b families um so we compute uh, using this structure constant and the formula we compute the unique normal form for this family and it's lots of other uh, representation that uh, i didn't put here so as you can see we simplify a lot so here all n orbit contribute in the vector fields but here we have like a um, product of this function with this simple or operator and product of this function and this is um, this b is uh, one of the invariant this is also function with the other simple operator and uh, the uh, first integral for this um, uh, vector fields are given by i x y z so you can apply to um, other example like Russeller equation. This is the Russeller equation. And this equation for two set of parameters has a, a triple zero uh, singularity. So if we uh, choose the first set and put the epsilon i zero and uh, put a system in the, uh, like a transforming system um, by, um, uh, in the Jordan form and a standard form. Uh, so we will get this triple zero uh, singularity. And um, so uh, we embed every, um, we embed the nonlinear part to the SL2. And then we using the structure constants and theory of normal form, we could simplify this system. So this is according to the algebraic structure that we produce. So if you uh, compute, uh, um, uh, if you convert to the vector field, you will um, get this normal form. This is unique normal form corresponding to the Russeller equation. Um, so uh, what we are doing right now is um, um, uh, finishing the unique normal form. I go to this uh, part uh, for the other uh, Lie algebra of nilpotent singularity and uh, also a study of of this family. Uh, 
um, so I already finished the bifurcation of um, this system. Um, this uh, complete integral and volume preserving family, which is, uh, this is the normal form. And uh, so, and we also trying to classify the normal form and define normal form for some kind of uh, network dynamic system. Uh, so thanks for your attention. Thanks, Baime. Uh, you're welcome. For the talk. Um, yes, uh, participants, uh, you can use the Q&A feature or the raise hand feature at the bottom of your screen uh, to ask a question. Are there any questions from anybody? So maybe just one general question uh, from my side. Um, if the, I mean, uh, if you can calculate the, the normal forms, uh, of course they are sort of for simpler systems, they, normal forms are usually used to sort of classify uh, different types, uh, different types of, um, uh, of, of fixed points. Um, for, for these complicated normal forms that you get uh, with your method, um, what, uh, how, how can you sort of compare them or how do you uh, systematically sort of, how, what do you use these normal forms for when you finally have them? That's, that's uh, okay, when we have this normal form, we start to find a bifurcation for, the, for them. Sure. So, um, so when we have a full system with the, uh, before the normal form, uh, we usually don't, don't start to find the bifurcation because um, so you have lots of terms in your system and they don't play a role in the bifurcation. So you prefer to get rid of all, all these terms and uh, then study the uh, bifurcation to get mm. a, like a symmetric form um, to better study. Mm. Okay, sure. Okay, any other questions? May I ask a question? Sure. <laughs> oh yeah, now I see it. Yes, in the okay. chat. No, sorry, I didn't see it. Hello. So thanks. Hello. For the, thanks for the very interesting talk. I do not myself. I do not work on uh, normal form, but I know um, centimanifold manifold theory quite well. And usually you, you use center manifold theory also to get to know more about uh, non-asymptotic uh, fixed points. So to learn more about the nonlinear dynamics close to a, to a fixed point. And in uh, center manifolds, uh, there has been, have been some extensions to um, to learn more about the uh, response of the systems when you, uh, uh, when you have an external driving, let's say a periodic driving or noisy driving. So um, noise also changes the, the behavior close to a fixed point. And you can show this in, uh, by sender manifold theory that uh, in fact noise changes the stability of a fixed point. So, um, I understand, so in a, in a broader sense, I understand your work that you want to know more about uh, the bifurcation or possible bifurcation or nonlinear dynamics close to a fixed point by this normal form. So is there any way to, to include other features like, like external driving or noise or periodic driving? Is there uh, approach where you can take into account these effects because they they are there you know so you you can really change the stability of fixed point of a non-hyperbolic fixed point uh, by external driving um, if I understand your question correctly so we first assume that the system is in the center manifold so we already reduced to the um, like um, um, non hyperbolic fixed points. So, right. if you have a, like eigenvalues which are not uh, 
uh, which are non-zero and we have a zero, so we can uh, put the system in the center manifold and then apply the normal form on it. Um, okay. So, okay. yeah, this, uh, this system are already in the center manifold. So you assume that your system already behaves? So yes. Also yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Because that was not, well, that was not that obvious. Yeah, so, so you have to do this step before and then you can simplify it, let's say, or rewrite it to get to know more about uh, the dynamics. Closer. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Right. Uh, it's really interesting. So I, I was wondering about these uh, inversion um, uh, formulas, right? These really big things. Like, are there some kind of graphical methods of simplifying these? Like, basically some kind of Feynman diagrams or something like that? Um, so what's the purpose of this diagram? <laughs> It would simplify things. I think that's mostly the, um, like these these big ass calculations would be easier. I think that's at least how people use this. Um, I actually um, not uh, aware about that, um, but uh, I think this is the, uh, what's uh, from them uh, or knowledge, this is the simplest uh, uh, coefficient that we can have the simplest form that we can have. You mean, is there any way to uh, simplify this formula? The oh, I, I was showed. just thinking about the, the calculations you're doing. Like, uh, like, do you use these graphical things or is that useless in your context? Uh, oh, I have never think about it. Maybe yeah. it can be useful. <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. 